wanted to make this video today because I just picked up a Babbage full contact hardware bridge and noticed that there were no before after videos of the, uh, the, the vintage style. Um, I'll show it to you in a sec. So I figured I would do a little unboxing because people always like unboxings. And then I want to compare this bridge uh, to the stock bridge on my Edward strap there. Uh, do a side by side, I don't know, maybe weigh them or something. And uh, then put the Babbage on there and do a uh, comparison of recordings uh, between the two bridges to see if we can notice any difference. Um, so, start out, here's the package itself. Um, pretty cool, I guess. So you can see it comes with a whammy bar. Um, it's very, very impressive looking saddles. Look at the sustain block on this thing. It's massive. I wasn't expecting that based on pictures I had seen. Then it comes with three springs. As it happens, I have five raw vintage springs on my Strat now. So um, I'll go ahead and take those out too and maybe see how they feel, if they feel similar or of the same quality. So take this out to get this thing open. It's much easier than trying to get into regular consumer electronics. So here are the springs. Um, my first impression is they are definitely um, a little bit stiffer than the raw vintage. Um, I don't know if it says if maybe they're noiseless or if there's anything special. Well, here's the back of the package. It doesn't say that there's anything special about the uh, the springs, but uh, yeah. So this is actually describing <laughs> all of the benefits to the bridge I did not buy. Uh, this is the the standard Babbage bridge. Whereas this one, uh, this one right here is made specifically to go on to vintage style strats and not look too extreme though, as you can see, it still does look pretty nuts um, uh, in comparison with the vintage tuners. Uh, the Z series, that's right. So this is the Z series, so it only has one saddle lock. Um, I'm assuming that's this piece. But, um, you know, when you actually look at this thing, it's actually really neat. Check out, so here's what the sides look like. There's one side, all right. Um, okay, there's the front. And there's that, very good looking, very impressive. And the um, actual mechanism for adjusting the action of the string. The string height is actually really, really cool. So if you go onto their YouTube channel, you can, um, they have a computer simulation uh, that sort of shows the, the way in which the, the mechanism works. But um, down on the website, uh, they do a much better job explaining it than I do. So what I'll do now, or realistically, uh, over the course of the next couple of days, uh, I will take the bridge out of the strat. Um, I think it's a, uh, it's like a Godo vintage style uh, bridge that's in the strat now. I'll take it out and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, the block on that's actually pretty decent, so what I was anticipating doing was taking the block off of there and putting it onto here, but considering like this monster, I think that would be a regressive, uh, have a regressive effect. Yeah, so let's see what both of the bridges look like side by side. So we're going to start out a little bit superficial uh, with the comparison here. Uh, just to start with the whammy bar, uh, the one on the top here, this is the, Brabbit, uh, the, the um, whammy bar for the Babbage bridge. You can see it's uh, a little bit longer, so it's at a slightly different angle. Um, here's the, uh, the two side by side. The important part here is just simply the fact that you can see that the Babbage is quite a bit longer, so it sits up higher than a, than a stock whammy bar typically would. Here are the two side by side. So uh, one point I want to emphasize before I show the recordings is that 
the stock bridge on this strat was actually really good. Um, I've speculated that it's a that it's a go-to vintage tile, but I'm not 100%. It just looks similar to it. Uh, but uh, in any case, it's all stainless steel. It's all quite solid. Um, but uh, as you can <laughs> see, uh, the Babbage looks dramatically different. So here the two are side by side. Again, you know, knocking the point home uh, that the uh, the sock bridge was pretty decent. It has a nice sustained block there. Um, and in theory, you know, this is a full contact bridge. In theory, this here should make that full contact. Um, as opposed to say here where it's only these two screws and those are the only places and that's the only place where it touches. Um, so I decided to weigh the two. Why not I guess. Uh, it turns out that the stock that the, uh, the stock bridge was actually slightly heavier uh, than the two. Uh, and here's you know whatever you guys want to make of this. So on the uh, on the Godo vintage style, they had sort of a diagonal uh, cut on the knife edge, whereas the Babbage uh, was sort of cut straight. And consequential stuff, but maybe uh, it's of interest to you guys. Uh, here was an important part, and this is something that I wanted to add, uh, just in case any of you guys here are thinking about swapping out your bridge, but you haven't had a whole lot of experience with uh, you know, getting your hands dirty with guitars and say even taking tools uh, to it, machine tools. Um, so this one here is from the stock. It's a little bit unusual. Typically um, six point strat bridges will have the, uh, will in fact look like uh, this one here, the one that came on the Babbage bridge or at least something close to it. Uh, so I was a little bit surprised about that whenever I pulled the stock bridge out, but it's no matter. You just have to, um, you know, what I did was I just double checked um, the sizes on both. So the first one here, uh, the first one being uh, the stock screw and the second one here from the Babbage bridge. So just to see how dramatic of a difference it was between the two. Then I picked um, an appropriately small drill bit. Well, one thing you, it's always good to do is to, you know, first see how long um, how long you need to go and then put a little piece of tape there just to ensure that you don't accidentally drill through the guitar. Um, it's of course more useful if you're swapping out something on the headstock where it is quite easy to pop through the top. Um, so here it is as well. All right so it didn't have to take out too much just a little bit. Um, so I do have a little bit of a confession to make. Um, wouldn't want to withhold this information from you. So <laughs> it's not a perfectly well controlled test. Uh, what I did was I got some pickup tubing because it reduces the noise. Um, it reduces, you know, potential noise, uh, whatever. So I uh, changed it out. The thing is, is there is a difference between how the two bridges sound, but it's not in a way that the pickup tubing would have made a difference. But in any case, if you guys are swapping out bridges or um, you know doing pickup tubing or anything like that. One thing that's always a good idea. Yeah, here's the tubing. Uh, one thing that's always a good idea is to just you know measure just how high your pickups are on either side. It just makes it easier. Um, you can put it back exactly to where it was before instead of doing a little bit of guesswork and measuring against the strings. And there's what it actually looks like. Again, so this means it's not a perfectly controlled experiment. Um, oh well. So here is the bridge strung up. The new Babbage bridge um, looks pretty cool, right? Compare it compared to the stock one here. It looks dramatically different. Um, so here's the Babbage again, and the vintage style, and one more time, the Babbage, 
and the vintage style. Now this is actually um, pretty cool how the string height's actually done, but I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, now one thing that may you guys may have noticed with the first picture of the Babbage Bridge installed is that in fact when you have strings on the vintage style Babbage, it is not um, there's not perfectly full contact here. Uh, there's contact here on this side, but there's, you know, it's not flush all the way against the, the base plate. Um, and since it's not flush against it, this means that in fact, there's only one point on the bridge that's actually touching it. Um, so that was slightly, I don't want to say disappointing. The thing is, is with a regular Babbage bridge, it will sit flush because it has this um, two screw locking mechanism. So in that case, it would normally sit flat. It's just with this vintage style and with it, you know, uh, being attached through the spring at the back and only having that one point of entry, that one point of contact, it means it's technically not full contact. It does say that there's 50% more contact than with regular bridges. So maybe that's a more accurate uh, way of putting it. Right, so as you can see, even though there won't be full contact necessarily, uh, there it does get a significant more amount more. See, because it sits all the way, it makes full contact horizontally at every point here, right? compared to the vintage style where, you know, it makes contact there and there, there and there, there and there. So obviously you'll have a stronger uh, resonance uh, contact uh, with the Babbage bridge than with the vintage. Um, so one thing that struck me right off the bat when I put the Babbage bridge on uh, you know, getting to that point of uh, does the full contact make a difference in terms of resonance from the strings going into the body? Um, and my first impression was that it was. And then when I put a tuner on it, it sort of confirmed this. So I've got one of these uh, little Daddario tuners that, that uh, tell you the pitch based on the vibrations of the guitar. And with the last bridge, um, if I was tuning the B string, so obviously the, the correct string is not depicted here on the uh, with the D sharp, that's of course the E string, but on the, the, the B string, I had trouble getting the pitch to show up properly. It couldn't, for whatever reason, the, the, the vibrations were just a little bit too weak with the last bridge, and I couldn't tune the B string uh, with this tuner. Now, I don't have a problem. It... Uh, it sends the uh, uh, quite a bit more vibrations into the body of the guitar, which works its way back up to the headstock and uh, helps make tuning a little bit easier for me. Um, this is really more of a maintenance tip uh, for, for some of you guys. If, uh, if you're swapping out a bridge um, or just in general, if you do bridge work, uh, like personally, I like to take bridges apart, maybe once every year, once every couple years, get everything cleaned out and put back together. And the nice thing here is if you have some of these guys, you know, these are used for measuring the radius on, on your neck. All right, so in this case, I have a 12 inch radius on this. Uh, if you have a compound, you know, you wanna make sure that your guitar doesn't have a compound radius. So you just wanna make sure that the radius is the same at the end of the neck as it is on the other side. And then once you do that, you can use the this side to get your uh, strings at the correct level. So you basically just raise these guys up until they come into contact with that. And your string height's almost perfect at that point. Uh, now, here's the point I wanted to mention about how this bridge actually works. It's pretty neat. So um, 
we have two things going on here on every one of these saddles. The saddle to the left is a lock, whereas the saddle to the right here actually adjusts the height of the, uh, of the, the string height. So when you're doing adjusting here, you first have to uh, loosen the lock on the left side here, the highlighted in red, you first loosen that, and then you adjust the height here on the right side in the green. And then once you have it at the appropriate height, you of course want to make sure that you lock and fasten it uh, nice and tight. And that's all I have uh, for the pictures and the visual comparison. Uh, let's see how they sound. Pretty dramatic results, uh, a little bit more dramatic than I expected. I will let you decide what you think sounds better and what sounds worse. Um, in my opinion, um, you know, I'm agnostic <laughs> on that front. Uh, I would, my opinion is that one sounds more like a strat and the other one 
you know, it still sounds like a Strat, but it doesn't have that Stratty characteristic. And of course, the one that sounds more like a Strat is naturally the Stockbridge uh, with the real, you know, vintage style saddles. Um, you know, to my ears, uh, I think one could, one as immediate reaction is to think that the highs sound a little bit more shrill on the vintage one. Um, I don't think so. I think the highs come through just as just as much uh, with the Babbage Bridge as with the Godo. The difference is is that the uh, the vintage, the the stock bridge, the uh, the wave probably goes something more like that and then drops a little bit more suddenly as the vibrations dissipate. Whereas on the Babbage, you know, it goes just as high, but it comes off more slowly. So it doesn't sound, you know, it doesn't have that sort of poppy percussive punch to quite the same extent. Um, I think, you know, the Steve Ray Vaughn stuff that comes through a little bit more clearly. On the other hand, um, on the Babbage, the lows really come through a lot more. Um, uh, on Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, the, the recording for that, it comes through very, very clearly um, how much more defined uh, the sound is. This isn't to say that um, the stock bridge sounds worse. I don't think so. Um, but it, there is a very, very clear difference. Yeah, perhaps one of the reasons is just the lower frequencies. These are, these are longer waves um, and with more contact. Perhaps they travel through a little bit more. Uh, the other thing that I noticed, uh, and this is something that you can't hear in the recordings, is that the, the springs um, have a tendency to, to, to ring out, to sing a little bit more. I don't know if, if um, I can hear it through my webcam camera, but let's take something like, um, you know, like a Texas shuffle, like in uh, Pride and Joy. So, you know. sound comes through but it's just there's this constant there's one other really important thing here that goes into to the to the sound and the recording um, there were a couple of recordings in which um, well one specifically so the rain song when I do the rain song on the uh, the stock record the stock bridge recording um, I dig in the whole time whereas um, for the Babbage recording, that the attack just wasn't nearly what it was uh, in this, you know, this, the uh, this part. And of course, for the stock recording, I went all out with it. Whereas I went a lot lighter. You know, that wasn't intentional, it's because I recorded these days apart from each other. So it's an oversight on, on, uh, on my part. But uh, in any case, I, I think th the lesson from that should be how important your pick attack is and the location of where exactly your picking is for your tone as opposed to say how much of a difference that the, the bridge makes. So, for example, all the Steve Ray Vaughan stuff, you know, it's always here. Steve Ray Vaughan plays, plays in this area mostly. Whereas Led Zeppelin, you know, the Led Zeppelin stuff, Jimmy Page tended to play a little bit. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting this totally wrong, but at least when I'm at home playing and I'm trying to get the sound right, uh, it comes, the attack makes all the difference. 
Anyhow, um, I hope that you found this video instructive or helpful in one way or another. Um, you know, if you're considering a Babbage bridge, or maybe not even a Babbage bridge, just a different design bridge, right? Babbage isn't the only one that has these sort of flat surfaces going along them. Um, I hope this helps you figure out if this is sort of the, the sound you're looking for. Uh, thanks, and if you have any additional questions, just uh, comment and ask. Thanks. And thought maybe, uh, you know, leave you guys with the uh, complete recording of me uh, attempting to doodle over Texas flood with the Babbage Bridge. Uh, hope you enjoy. <laughs>